I'm in about my 44th year of doing pottery. I started after high school. There's a few things that inspired me to try pottery. One of the things was a man at the college I was at who was doing an extracurricular course in pottery. You know, I was fascinated with what he was able to do. Also, my, my grandmother had lots of beautiful pottery in her house from having spent years of living in China. So there was a few things that you know, inspired me in that way. I applied to a college and I got accepted. And that's where the journey began. Well, after I finished the course that I did in Australia, I was encouraged in my last year, a lecturer came from Japan and um, he encouraged me to go and to apply to the University of Art in Kyoto, continue some studies in porcelain. The university started off on one side of the city in what used to be a hospital during the Second World War. They sold that university to a Buddhist sect, the temple next door, and they built a new university on the other side of Kyoto, and I had to move because it was too far to commute across. The apartment building that I moved into, you know, my wife was living in the same apartment building and I got to know her there. She was a kindergarten teacher. I use a lot of different processes. My original training was in a Western English Bernard Leach type tradition because that's what my teachers were trained in and that's what their experiences were. But when I went to Japan, I had to unlearn a lot of those techniques because some of them were not very good. I basically follow a lot of Japanese technique these days, which having experienced it and worked with it, I certainly think it's superior to Western technique most of the time. Uh, small electric kilns, I've got uh, three different gas kilns and I've got a wood kiln and they all have their own uses. Depending on the need, I'll fire different kilns. Most of the time for the porcelain I'm firing in a gas kiln. It's controllable and consistent. Wood kiln can be really exciting, but a little less predictable. Sometimes the results from a wood kiln, you just can't repeat in a gas kiln, and that's interesting too. Far more spontaneous when I'm uh, glazing for the wood kiln, because I think it's a different sort of medium altogether. Often in areas of the wood kiln, I won't put any glaze on, I'll allow the, the actual uh, fire and the ash to do the work for me. I'm also very interested in uh, beautiful old Korean ceramics and probably my first love in many ways was some Chinese ceramics. But it's not just oriental, there's other areas in the world that inspire you as well. The, I like the Scandinavian approach. Now look, you could say this is one of my favourite pots. This is an example of my teacher's work. It's very light, very translucent porcelain. It's been hand thrown and hand painted and you know it's it's so light you hardly know you've got it in your hand it's an example of really beautiful skill and something to aspire towards so uh, some of my teachers pieces from Kyoto would have to be among my, some of my favorite pots um, they're technically so hard to get close to uh, if I get close to this sort of work I'm fairly happy but it's certainly you know it's an inspiration to say, look, people can make things like this. You just have to persist and keep on trying. Because there's an example of one that's been made and it's all been made by hand. So these, these are little tiny senshar cups. There's another beautiful one. Very translucent and very thin. A beautiful craftsmanship. You don't often see anything like this outside Japan, apart from China. So, you know, they're lovely examples of the, the top of the ceramic art, you might say. Came back to Australia looking to set up my studio in Australia. It was either stay in Japan a lot longer or come back and try and establish. Now, at the time I thought it was going to be a lot easier to set up a studio in Australia than in Japan. Whether that was the best idea, it's a bit hard to go backwards now, so... There's sort of no real retirement age in this sort of game. You've just got to keep at it.
you don't make a lot of money at it either really but it's the pleasure you get from working with clay and doing a variety of things and doing a bit of teaching and passing knowledge on 